For millennia, humans have stared into the night sky, curious about what's out there in space. But quite recently, we've gotten the tools to also look back on us, on planet Earth. However, there comes a problem with the wealth of data. For example, Landsat 1 to 3 had an onboard capacity of about 3.75 gigabytes, which was huge at the time. But today, Landsat 7 and 8 routinely collects about one terabytes of data every 24 hours. Alpha Earth is Google DeepMind's response to this. It's a foundational geospatial model that computes special coordinate embeddings for each 10 meter by 10 meter pixel on the surface of Earth. What's key is that the Alpha Earth Foundation model combines a range of data, thousands of bands, ranging from optical and thermal imagery, radar data, 3D surface measurements, climate properties, gravity field, geolocated descriptive text, you name it, and condense them into 64 bands that are called an embedding. And the satellite embedding coordinate is kind of like a combination of all of those data layers. So we're constructing this new Earth, where each coordinate does not only have three values, like the lat long and the elevation, but rather 64 numbers. But what's special about these numbers is that they carry semantic meaning. This means that locations that are similar are going to have similar arrows on this sphere, while locations that are very different will have arrows pointing in a very different direction. What's interesting then is you start to be able to look just at these coordinates to be able to tell a lot about the relationships between every single point on Earth. And what's really special about these new types of coordinates is that they not only factor in the geospatial location, but also the temporal location. Meaning that if you have the same patch of land, you can track it over time just by looking at how its spatial coordinate changes over time. Now to measure the similarity and difference between two of these coordinates, we use something called the cosine similarity, which is just the angle between the vectors. And if the vectors are only one in length, or what's called unit length, we can just simplify this equation to just be the dot product between the vectors. And then it will be visualized the dot product between the vectors where we highlight the vectors that are more different with white, we can see places where the same location has maybe dramatically been changed over time. And because the satellite embeddings form this very rich feature space, where each of those vectors really carry some kind of meaning of both itself and its relation to other locations, the satellite embeddings and the alpha Earth model really enables multiple downstream tasks. And three of the one highlighted by the authors include similarity search, so finding places that are both very similar or very different from each other, unsupervised clustering, where even without any labels, you can find areas that are quite similar to each other and kind of go together, and even supervised classification, where just with a few labels, you can get quite accurate and high resolution, for example, land cover and land use maps. So for example, let's say we want to do a similarity search. What we can do is just click on a point here. And what's going to happen is that it's going to look at this tile. And what we see now is that lighter areas are actually more similar and the darker areas are less similar to this patch of land right here. And what's fun is that you can now quite quickly start finding places which are really similar. For example, here I can see that these ones are lighting up and if we zoom in, yes, we are also more of those kind of solar panels. And when it comes to clustering, we can also just start letting it find kind of patterns in the region. And we can also say instead of doing kind of 25 clusters, we can go from just three clusters or try and find five, maybe 10 maybe even 25, and see if we can find any meaningful patterns. Or we can start labeling ourselves to say that, hey, we know that this is one class and this is another type of category and this is a third one. And when we kind of let the model use train, we can see that it quite well starts to 
kind of distinguish between these different land cover classes. However, the satellite embedding data set still has its limitation. For one, all of these bands might give higher accuracies, but they also become less interpretable because right now the band number 10 doesn't really have any physical meaning. Moreover, the release data set only is from 2017 to 2024, which means that you won't really be able to do any long-term studies with this data set as of now. The embeddings are also annual and mostly land-focused, and they're also limited coverage at the poles. So that was a brief introduction to Alpha Earth. And if you're curious to learn more, I encourage you to take a look at some of the Google DeepMind's resources and tutorials. But until next time, thank you so much for watching.